Hey, and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you guys a little bit of our homeschool routine. I have a kindergartner as well as I include her four-year-old sister in the, a lot of the lessons. So I'm gonna be showing you guys a little bit of what today is gonna to look like for us. We do have a little bit of an extra special um, thing today because one of our neighbors who is actually a retired teacher has been doing these little mini classes slash art sessions with the girls and they hold on so to start off our morning we have actually already done breakfast and they did their chores which for them their chores meaning brushing their teeth brushing their hair making their beds and getting dressed that's they don't have like a lot of chores so they have already done all of that and what we would typically do is after they do that i would go do my chores and give them some free time and then we would start immediately on school well today they actually went for a walk we got a new dog. Okay, so Hi guys, welcome to our channel. We are here with a new puppy. And a new puppy. And don't think it's fake guys, it's real. My mom's having a lot of fun right now too. She's sweeping right now. Hi mom. Hi. We have a new dog. Yeah. And I'm not kidding, we have a new dog. So this, our dog is named, well, their dog is named Luna. We're gonna see how it, we're gonna go with her for a few weeks and just make sure it goes well. And if it goes well, we're gonna keep her. But if it doesn't go really well, we're gonna just bring her back. But I'm really hoping it goes well. Hey, hey! I have to go get that. Bye guys! So because of all the excitement of this new creature that we have, um, they have been outside for the last hour. It is already 10 o'clock. We have not started school yet, but I'm not stressing it because they've been outside in nature. Come in here to get a treat. A treat Luna. for Luna. So I honestly, if they're outside, they're getting along, they're playing, I am not going to stress putting more, putting some kind of structure on them for learning. So. I'm gonna let them just continue to play and get along and have fun outside. And while they're doing that, I will make sure I get my water down, start some coffee, and go ahead and set up um, our little group session schoolwork. So I'll take you guys along for that. Welcome to our classroom slash kitchen. So the first thing I like to do is just get everything set up to start our group reading. I got this little tray for my neighbor. She is the sweetest and I just stacked it with some different types of coloring utensils and I am just going to get everything set up. I like to give the kids some sheets of paper or some drawings to go ahead and work on while I am reading to them. This just helps keep them focused. Once that's done, I'll move on to prepping anything else I need for our classes for the day. So I'm setting up these little manipulatives for Emmy. It's just uppercase and lowercase letters. Thanks again to Catherine for setting that up. And once that is ready, I will try to get everybody sat down and we will start on our group study. Four, three, two, one, zero. All right, let's do our Good morning, dear Earth. Good morning, dear Sun. Does anybody remember what the key truth is for this week? God is good. God is good. That's all right. So we always start off with group study, doing a song. This is something that I picked up um, from the Waldorf Method, and I really just like this. I've gone through so many different styles of curriculums, and I really just, whoa, okay, there's a baby. Um, so we start off with the song, and then for our group study, we typically will always do Bible first, and after Bible, I will go right into um, some kind of read aloud. Today, we are reading from... Um, Beatrice Potter's Peter Rabbit. Addled, Mr. Todd had a very unsatisfactory night. As usual, when out of humor, he determined to move house. First, he tried the pollard willow. So I did select um, this reading today because I have been reading a lot on Charlotte Mason and her different ideas on education and something that has really stuck with me is not reading what she terms as twaddle which is stuff books that are dumbed down to children or um they just are not very lively so she refers to 
books that are living books as what we should be reading to our children. There's so much more that actually classifies a book as a living book. And I'm not quite sure that Beatrice Potter is, but I think that this these are just these books are just so full of just beautiful vocabulary and some of the words I honestly can't even pronounce and I've just never been a big reader, so that could be why, but the kids really, every time I try to stop and say, oh, we'll pick this up tomorrow, they'll say, oh, wait, can we finish the story? So I don't know. I think this was a great choice for us. And also another thing to keep in mind is if you are having a hard time getting their attention span during reading times, really consider doing the coloring. You would think it would take their focus, but it really doesn't. They're really listening and just honing in. And this is probably my favorite time of our school day. Um, beside the fact that I still have not figured out a good system for the twins. Um, so yeah, we will go from reading and then we will go into doing a little bit of like individual work. Okay, this is what I've been having to do to keep them occupied while we're doing school. I've been giving them a snack and locking them in the playroom, but it's not going so eventful right now. Okay, put them back in your bowl. Here, put them back in your bowl. <laughs> All right, there you go. Is that a capital or a little a? Okay, so this side is the uppercase, okay? All right, let's go over your sh short vowel sounds first, okay? So what is this one? So the book that we are going through right now is a phonics book. It's called A Handbook for Reading. This is one of the original Abeka phonics books. This book was actually inspired by the Blueback Speller written by Noah Webster back in 1783. So I really love this as just a guide to make sure we are on track with where we need to be with phonics. And I don't know, I just love the simplicity and how beautiful this book is. So also one of the things I was gifted by my friend Catherine. So thanks again for that. Teachers helping teachers. That's an actual website, but teachers are so willing to help other people. So anyway, thanks again, Kat. All right. The Abeka Phonics textbook that I've been using, I've really just, like I said, been using this more as a guide. And so I wanted to add something for more of a workbook. And so I did purchase the Good and the Beautiful's um, Language, Arts, and Literature Level K course book. And this is awesome because it includes phonics, reading, spelling, literature, grammar and punctuation, and art appreciation. I love how, I don't know, it the book, the pictures, um, the narrations in it, everything about this book is very almost like vintage to me. Um, it's very, uh, I guess, within the title of the curriculum, beautiful. Um, and I don't know, she seems to really be enjoying it. And it's not super long lessons, which also really helps because she does not have the biggest attention span. So that is what we go straight into. We use our um, our phonics textbook through the Abeka program as kind of like an intro into doing our lesson from The Good and the Beautiful. And this is something that we do every day. So, well, I say every day. We actually do not do school on Friday, but this is part of our everyday curriculum. We always make sure to include our phonics work. Ben? Yeah, good job. Ben. So Ben. Can. 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 Mm hmm. According to this video that you're watching, it is going to look like we have a very smooth, like casual ish day with school. But. Um, that's just because I have to edit. Okay. So in real life, um, we have stopped like a hundred times. So changing diapers, um, the babies let the dog out the front yard and she was like taking off towards the road, um, their snack messes. And then they gave the dog pencils. So the dog was chewing up pencils. Um, and then just the actual attention span of the kids. So I would have loved to keep pounding out the work because all we have left is handwriting and their math sheets for like their core work. 
but they were done like she was she it was 15 minutes spent of sitting down and that was enough so they were like can we have a break so they're having a break so all together we might spend about two hours a day on our schoolwork but it's like spread out throughout the day and then with homeschooling we're constantly learning so when i get ready to do dinner if they're interested in helping with that or um or if we're listening to a podcast and they have a question about something or i mean it's just constant through the day so yeah this is our like sit down work but they're constantly learning so anyway i just didn't want you guys to get any assumptions on like how non-chaotic my life is but if somebody was here and could actually follow me around you'd be like holy hell what is she doing <laughs> I also wanted to mention real quickly, although I'm cleaning and you would think that's not like really an enjoyable thing, I actually find it somewhat therapeutic, cleaning and cooking. Um, and what I also like to do is I'll pull up um, podcasts and have those playing. So I feel like I'm actually like listening and talking and conversing with adults through the day and learning something like helping stimulate my own brain um, besides like just doing like kid stuff all day. So, all right, so the episode that I ended up listening to today um, was actually on the vaccine conversation um, and it was an interview um, with Robert F. Kennedy Jr. So this was President John F. Kennedy's nephew. He is a environmental law specialist and a huge advocate for clean water um, and he got started with all of this um, and started really digging into mercury and I think that's what's going to tie him into this interview. I'm not really sure because um, I haven't actually listened to it yet but I thought that was very interesting that it's um, President Kenny Kennedy's nephew and he's a huge like environmental specialist so and he's a lawyer so hopefully he'll get some stuff done. Good job. <laughs> Did you know that? Did your mom and dad do Thanks, Miss Pam. <laughs> <laughs> How do you fix a broken jack of With a pumpkin. <laughs> Good channel. What else do I say?